Okay, so the authors are looking to see how does the liquidity affect the factor returns in the Johannesburg Stock Exchange over the 94 to 2011 period. And to do this, they basically set up a univariate uh, regression for each of the commonly used factors in previous uh, studies. And so these factors may be related to value, for instance, um, cash flow to price, size, such as market value, um, or momentum, um, such as this is the 12 year uh, or 12 month previous return momentum. So using each of these factors, they uh, created a regression to see what was the coefficient um, on this particular factor. And I've also got T statistics here so we can see which ones are significant. And they're sorted by T statistics so we can see these top ones are the most significant. And they didn't mark which ones are actually significant, but it's probably about two. So starting here with the earnings yield and going up. So let's just take a look at some of the top ones here. So our top one here is, or rather the most significant one according to the T-statistic, um, is uh, cash flow to price, which is a value metric. And so that would say that stocks who have a higher cash flow to stock price um, would have a higher return than those of a lower cash flow to stock price. So we ne next we have a couple of size factors. For instance, this is the the stock price and the market capitalization. So they're negatively related to the return. So smaller of these will have um, larger returns. And we have a lot of momentum factors. The momentum, this is the overbought, oversold factors here. So these are related to mom momentum. Um, it looks like they're positively related to stock returns, which is similar to prior studies. We have another value um, factor here, the book value to market price. So higher book value to market, which would identify a value stock, um, have a higher return than, than a growth stock. And so now to get more into what the authors were trying to identify, they limited their population sample to large cap only in this column by using a, a dummy variable just to see um, what was the factor coefficient with only large cap. And so in this case, for instance, the cash flow to price, um, the, the coefficient increased. So you might say from a value stock perspective, the for larger cap stocks, the stock's return is more sensitive to cash flow to price than smaller capitalization stocks. And we kind of see the opposite effect with momentum related factors where, um, for instance, smaller companies would have more of a pronounced effect from momentum factors. And so something to note, the authors are equating um, market cap with liquidity. So larger cap companies are um, more liquid due to more shares being um, traded. So that's an assumption that they're, they're making here to make a point that, or to, to describe the liquidity effects of the different stocks on the factors as opposed to maybe company size itself. Um, but something interesting to note is the beta here is at the very bottom almost of the T statistics to say that maybe the cap M formula that is um, prominently used is not really effective at all in predicting stock returns. So next to understand the size of the effect that the um, large cap or liquidity stock adds or subtracts from the factor coefficient, um, the authors built, built, built a regression to 
see that effect. So to do that, they um, basically did a two, um, a bivariate regression um, using a dummy variable. For instance, um, the first independent variable would be um, basically this factor. And then the second dependent variable would be um, the same thing, but with a, a dummy variable to say one if it's a large cap stock and zero if it's a small cap. And that in that way, the second term would be eliminated or used based on uh, the size of the company. And so to s in that way, we can see what is the effect of um, adding um, the large cap component um, and from the author's assumption the liquidity um, of that particular stock. So looking specifically at this large cap dummy coefficient um, they've got it sorted by the T statistic and bolded the ones that are um, significant and that's these top four ones here and so this would say um, these top four ones are the ones that are most affected by um, adding liquidity to the stock return, or the rather the stock components. And we can see that the the one the factors that are most affected are the moving average ones, which would be more kind of a momentum effect, and uh, dividend yield and cash flow to price, which are more value effects, and kind of consistent with prior literature, we see that the moving average, which is momentum, are negatively affected by um, making those components large cap or more liquid stocks. And uh, with the value factors, they are positively affected by making the companies large cap as opposed to small caps. So you might could say that... Um, related to the momentum factor, then smaller cap companies might earn um, higher returns than large cap companies. And the reverse is true for value-related factors where larger cap companies earn higher value-related returns. And so next, they've um, re-categorized um, the factor returns to be equal to, um, for instance, with cash flow to price, um, they would subtract the returns of the top 30% of cash flow to price ranked companies minus the return of the lowest ranked cash flow to price, 30% of those, to get a net return as if you went long the top 30% and short the bottom 30%, just to see what the um, net return would be. And again, they've got these sorted by um, T-statistics so we can um, look at the most significant ones. So we see the cash flow to price is the top ranked one. Looks like both on the mean return and the T-statistics, so we can be pretty confident that this 2% is likely not just zero. And these are monthly returns, so that's a pretty big significant, uh, that's a bit, pretty big amount um, that you can earn 2% per month um, extra just by buying uh, companies that are, um, have higher cash flow to price. Next, we have a couple size related factors with the market value and um, price. And so as, as it's been noted in prior studies and uh, is smaller cap companies would earn higher returns than large cap companies. And that's why we see these as being negative. And then next we have a couple momentum factors, momentum here, and these are overbought, oversold um, momentum factors as well. And this is in line with prior studies of about 1% um, excess return by buying momentum companies. And then we have another value factor here, the book value to market, about 1% extra return. And so then the authors um, compared it to um, what would be the case if we only included um, large cap companies. 
And what we see in, um, I think, all cases is that by um, making the, the stocks in the sample large cap instead of all of them, it um, somewhat mutes the effect of these factors. For instance, um, the cash flow to price return difference between the top and bottom third decreases a bit and becomes a little less significant. Um, same with these size factors and also the momentum factors here, the returns decreased a bit um, along with the T statistics and to a point to where a lot of them are insignificant um, and maybe not different. Maybe the return difference isn't different than zero once you get into there being large caps. So really what this tells us is that um, the only factors that really kind of work out um, from a statistical significant standpoint after for large cap stocks only is the book value to market, which is a, a value factor, the 12 month momentum and the cash flow to price, and maybe the, the price per share here too. And also interesting to see the beta is still a very insignificant factors where um, um, higher market beta um, stocks historically from the literature should earn higher returns than low beta stocks, but that's just not the case here. It does become more appropriate um, for larger cap stocks, though.